The Kinsett family has more than a century of horticultural involvement at Springlands near Blenheim. Employing 18 full-time and 50 casual pickers, their diverse operation includes tomatoes growing under glass, grapes and a cherry orchard. The backbone of the business is tomato growing and they're currently probably 70% of our business. My grandfather started off just on 100 years ago in the old road and I took over from my father and uncle and I was the only boy in the family and uh, I was expected to take over. We've got a couple of hectares under glass of tomatoes uh, which we mainly concentrate on winter production and we have um, cherries which comes in mid-November through to Christmas and we've also got 40 hectares of grapes. Some of that land was in cherries cut down and gone into grapes like a lot of people around here. And so we're diversified over those three crops. Growing techniques have changed hugely. We've started off in the soil, which we used to use nasties to treat the soil, and also steam sterilisation. But it's all hydroponics these days under glass. And so the changes have been huge in my generation. You've just got to be efficient and be prepared to change with the market and be flexible, um, grow a good product and, uh, and you know, big is not always necessarily uh, best, uh, um, but certainly producing a good product is, is certainly number one. We started growing cherries in 1983. The market for us is probably about a third export, mainly for South Korea, Taiwan, we can go into Japan, we're geared up if we want to. And the rest of the domestic market. And we have a little stall down the road there for pick your own and store sales as well. Can I help you? Yeah, they've dried out reasonably well. We've only had three mil. That's splitting from the previous rain. There's no fresh splitting there at all. We had about five years in a row where we got rained out and that was pretty hard on anybody that got into the industry. And a lot of those people bailed out and planted grapes. And I think, uh, you know, to be fair, the central Otago area now is certainly the key area. We're a very small time compared with down there. And that's a more natural area to grow cherries. They're, uh, um, it's better suited for the export market, that late season export market. And they've got uh, far better winter chill than we have. Uh, we're not getting the winter chill that we used to enjoy, I don't believe. And some of these newer varieties uh, require that winter chill. And we, we traditionally, the month of December here is, I think on average we get about 45 millimetres of rain in the month of December. Some years I've known 130. Dawson was the main variety and that I guess is past its use by date. The newer American and French varieties have certainly overtaken. There is a few Dawson still growing around the country but very few. Pickers certainly haven't been an issue in the last few years. There's um, very good quality pickers backpacker type people that come from all around the world. I don't know how they find out about you. Um, and they're, they're brilliant. We don't, probably only need half the number of pickers we used to have here. And they follow on down to central Otago when they finish here. And we've had some of them coming back three or four years. Um, and they, um, yeah, the good pickers, they earn very good money when the picking's good. A few years ago we had 16 more hectares of cherries but as the cherry situation changed we had to adapt and we've since pulled all that out and put it in vineyards so with uh, 40 hectares of vineyard around it's quite a significant part for, for Paul's operation and, uh, and for the workload and the diversity of the whole operation. Three quarters of our production would be Sauvignon Blanc, uh, we grow a little bit of Pinot Noir uh, Gewürz Stramina and a bit of Chardonnay, um, but uh, 30 hectares is dedicated to Sauvignon Blanc, as uh, Marlborough is famous for. With our grapes, we're fairly young as growers, 
but as they come on a bit more, the demand between the grapes and the cherries is getting more and more, and I, I guess I'll balance that by not sleeping. <laughs> a lot of cloud, a lot of moisture, a bit of warmth. It just gets challenging to keep up with spray programs and um, trying to stay ahead of any potential problems. With the helicopter, it's an expensive exercise, but so is losing a whole crop. I guess if you looked at it, the cost of a helicopter, you only need to save uh, a couple of hundred kilos of um, cherries and you've paid for your helicopter. Just taking the extra stem off every second plant and then take the laterals off the extra stems just as soon as um, they've done those. Still pruning to five or so? Uh, six. Yeah. Two hectares under glass. There's about 55,000 tomato plants that we've got here, which is about two and a half plants per square metre. The tomato crop's a 50 week crop. This was planted about 21st of November, and so we're harvesting for about 40 weeks. The biggest challenge will be the psyllids uh, and the Liberobacter, which has been a real issue. Um, and so we've had to be really proactive in doing a lot more crop monitoring. Because we've got bumblebees, we have to be very careful with uh, the chemical that we use. So it is very limited as far as that's concerned. But there's not really anything that you can do from an integrated pest management point of view for the psyllids at this stage. So we are having to use chemical intervention if we find psyllids. So I guess the big thing for us is trying to keep the place as clean as possible. There's always issues because we're growing right through the year. Um, there's seasonal issues. And, um, but we managed to address that through um, deleafing, taking depending what time of the year it is. We've just recently converted from coal to wood chip because of the carbon tax. It's been a big operation, a big change for us, but so far been reasonably successful. We've had some funding from government agency with ECA, so that's worked really well. This is green wood chip, so it's basically straight from the sawmill. It's supplied by a local sawmill to us, so um, it can be anything from about 50 to 60 percent water content. So the challenge for us is to try and run the boiler as hot as we can and evaporate that moisture off quickly so that we can get the most fuel efficiency out of it. What's coming out of the chimney is just straight steam. It's working pretty well for us. It is a lot of work, more work than what we thought. Uh, we're using considerably um, a lot more wood chip um, by volume than we were previously with coal. So uh, there's a lot more loading, uh, a lot more work on the boiler. Um, but on the whole, it's working pretty well. This program was made with funding from New Zealand On Air.